You know, I'm very, 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 very proud of our evangelism team that went. And I'm very thankful to y'all because it was your finances through our, the part of our budget called Outreach that sent them and was able to pay for their journey down there. And uh, thankful to my pastor for opening up their homes and their church and congregation and their hospitality as well. Um, I shared with Miss Amy this morning to be sure to get a thank you card for all of us to sign. Now I want to send to Pastor John and his church, thanking them for their hospitality. Amen? And so even though some of you may not be real evangelistic yet, um, some of you uh, might say, ooh, that's not for me. Some of you might say, hey, maybe next year. Wherever you're at, you still had a part. Amen? And so it's a blessing that we're able to start sending out little teams to different places. And it makes a difference in their life. Amen? These young men and uh, uh, young ladies, they're going to remember this rest of their life. Amen? The rest of their life. So let's pray and let's listen to the Word of God this morning. Amen? I'm probably going to keep you an extra five minutes since we're getting started so late, but y'all don't mind, do you? Five minutes for Jesus, amen? What's that, 10? Sure. 15? <laughs> Hell, a 20, brother? Sure. I'm kidding. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you can say more in 30 minutes than I can say in 35 hours, Jesus. Father, I do pray for the power and anointing of your Holy Spirit to minister to our lives, to our hearts. Let the Word of God work in us, Father. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that we leave here a little bit changed and a little bit different in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 If everybody would be kind enough to uh, silence your cell phones, put them on vibrate, put them on mute. Amen. And we appreciate it. Persistence in prayer. Everybody say persistence in prayer. How many of you have raised children? How many of you have grown children and you're still raising? No, I'm kidding. I did not just raise my hand. So, listen. How many of you remember your children that you're raising ever being persistent about something? Where they really wanted something, they really wanted to do something or go somewhere. How many of you um, have ever had them wander through the aisle at Walmart or some other store where there's a toy section and they see something they want and they throw an absolute fit if you're not going to buy it for them. Anybody ever have that? And they're determined to be persistent because what they're trying to do is they're trying to wear you out until you give in and give up. Anybody ever been there before? Have you ever seen a child, maybe while you were at Walmart, acting out at the front register and mom's like, oh, we don't have the money, and you're almost like, they're just causing such a stink, you're almost willing to buy it for them yourself just to get them to hush up, right? <laughs> the thing we really need to learn to be persistent in is our prayer life. Everybody say persistent in prayer. Now, if you look at that little picture I put up there, you'll see that lone little green plant, that little seed, sprouted up through that crack in the pavement. I'd say it was pretty persistent, pretty persistent. How many of you have ever had some uh, weeds or something else you tried to kill out in your yard that were very persistent? We have, uh, many of you remember, we used to have a beautiful red oak tree in our front yard, my wife and I at our house, and a tornado came and knocked the oak tree onto the house. Thankfully, it spared the house, but broke our car and our carport, and it was a beautiful tree. I mean, a lovely tree. In the fall, it would turn bright red, just gorgeous. And we had to, we spent thousands of dollars to have it cut up and chopped down and put in a wood pile. And parts of that stump are now growing up through the cracks in the porch where you don't want it. And as much as I love that tree, it was being a little too persistent. So I bought some of that spray stuff to kill it, and I sprayed it, and it didn't do anything. I left it on there for days, so I sprayed it again, and I sprayed it again. Finally, it withered up. And I'm determined if it pops its little self up again this spring, 
I'm going to be just as persistent to kill it. In our life, we often give up right before the Holy Spirit is ready to bring an answer, to bring change, to bring transformation, freedom, whatever it is that we need in our life because we give up. And that's what I want to talk to you about here this morning. I love this little saying right here. It's by Leonard Ravenhill. Leonard was an old preacher. He was a young preacher. Then he turned into an old preacher. He was located in Taylor, Texas. He's now passed away into eternity. And this man was a revival preacher back in the day. And he said this. I love it. He said, the self-sufficient does not pray. The self-satisfied will not pray. The self-righteous cannot pray. No man is greater than his prayer life. Amen? To the staff and leaders in our church, your ministry will never be greater than your ability to spend time and pray and seek the Lord. To those of you who are our members here, I would say to you that your growth in Jesus will only go as far as your prayer life goes. And some of you and every one of us are all on different levels in our prayer life, but I want you to learn to be persistent in prayer. Everybody say persistent. Quick review from last week. Last week we were talking about acknowledging the Lord in prayer. We said that His kingdom on this earth is over those individuals who have been born again and made Jesus Lord and King of their little life. Amen? You know, people are like um, all the time, well, you know, if there's a God, why is this happy on the planet? And this happened, this happened. And you need to understand that His kingdom is coming, but it's not here yet. His kingdom is coming physically when Jesus comes back. Amen? The only place the kingdom of God is established right now on this earth is in the hearts and minds of those people who have been born again. Do you understand that? And how many of you know it's hard enough for us to align our will with His will, let alone unbelievers? Now, God works through it all in spite of all that because He's God. Amen? And He knows the end from the beginning. We said that His Word is His revealed will. Well, what's His will for my life? His Word tells us what His desire, His purpose, and His plan is for each and every one of you. Amen? We said the first thing is His will is for your life to be a reflection of Jesus. Plain and simple. When people see you, they should see the reflection of who Jesus is. Amen? Now, how many of you know we're all in different places of that? Some of us, our mirror is like really small. It's like you get out of the shower and there's nothing but fog there. And maybe we're not presenting a very good reflection of the Lord. But all the time, he's wanting to make a clearer and clearer reflection of who Jesus is. Because just like you heard in the testimonies, you may be the only Jesus that somebody else sees. That young lady who said, I've never, can you imagine somebody saying, I've never had anybody pray over me? We pray over these children every week, right? God forbid, I don't want any of them to say nobody's ever prayed over them. That's a big deal. She'll remember that for the rest of her life. And I'm trusting Holy Spirit's going to bring other divine encounters into her life. So the point is, you may be the only Jesus these people see. Your prayer life is you learning to submit your will to His will. And that's every day. Everybody say every day. Every day. Your Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, not for my will be done, Lord, but for your will to be done through my life. I submit my life to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen? So whatever and however you're praying, your main uh, concern in that praying is submitting to his will, his purpose, and his plan for your life. And lastly, we said last week, to surrender your will each and every day is to allow the Lord to have full possession of your life, not just pieces. Amen? How many of you know that we're all good giving them the easy pieces, right? The pieces that, you know, Lord, you can have this piece, you know, but maybe not this piece. He wants it all. Matter of fact, to be Lord, to be king, means to be ruler of it all. Amen? He wants all of me. And how many of you know, it's only when we learn to give all of us to him that we truly experience His purpose and His grace and His mercy and His blessings through our life. Amen? I'm telling you what, guys. When you hold back 
You're not hurting God. He's God. You're hurting you and who he's wanting to make you to be. I'm telling you that from 41 years of experience. Amen? The times I've held back didn't hurt anybody but me. Hurt me. Anybody else out there? All right. That was last week. You can catch that on YouTube. That was all free. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. We're talking about persistence in prayer. It says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the Spirit wields. This is out of the Amplified Bible. Which is the Word of God. Pray at all times. Everybody say pray at all times. Look at your neighbor. Say, I need to pray at all times. Pray at all times on every occasion in every season. And how many, literally every season is every other day in Texas, amen? Winter season, spring, summer today, fall tomorrow. We need to be praying in every season of our life, amen? In good times, in bad times, in rich times, in poor times, when you feel healthy, when you feel sick, when you feel sad, when you feel happy, you're to pray on every occasion. When you're in distress over your loved ones, you're to pray. When things go in great, you're to pray. Amen? It says, In the Spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty, to the end, keep alert and watch, keep awake, watch. I love this. I underlined it in green. With strong purpose and perseverance. And in the Greek, the word there, perseverance, literally means persistency. Persistency. You know what I picture of persistency? Stand up, brother, do you mind? It's like a child grabbing dad's pant leg and just keeps being persistent. Dad, and dad's talking. Now, I know this never happened to you, but dad's talking and son's like, dad, 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 dad. Persistent, amen. Thank you, brother. In your prayer life, in my prayer life, Heavenly Father wants you and I to learn to be persistent. And I'm going to teach you why. Listen, when you pray, it doesn't change God. I said that in Sunday school. He's God. He's all-encompassing. He's perfect. Amen? You and I can't add anything to God. Someone say amen. So our learning to pray with persistence is not for God's sake. It's for our sake. It's so that we can learn to have our character and our faith strengthened by the Holy Spirit through that waiting, through that trusting, and we're going to look at that. So here it says, with strong purpose and perseverance, this persistence in prayer is the ability to have faith beyond the normal. Most people, well, you know, I prayed once and I'm just done. God didn't answer. Have you ever heard that before or thought that before? Well, I prayed and nothing happened. Or how about this one? I prayed, Pastor, and things got worse. Who do you think did that? Not God. The devil hears those prayers too, right? And you're praying, things getting worse instead better. So you have a choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to give up in your praying? Or are you going to be like that child on dad's pant leg being persistent? I'm going to be persistent. And everybody say persistent. I'm like, Lord, I love you, but I'm going to bug you to death until I get an answer. I'm going to be persistent. In Hebrew, we have a word for this, by the way. It's called chutzpah. Everybody say chutzpah. Now, I'm not fluent in Hebrew, but I grew up, of course, in a Jewish home with Jewish parents. And this was one of those words that I just loved. It's like, son, have some chutzpah, you know. (laughs) Have some persistence. Don't give up. Don't give in. It's that never give up spirit. No retreat, no surrender, right? Come on, soldiers. Someone say amen. Right? We don't give up. We don't retreat. We don't surrender. I told the class Wednesday night, you're like a 747, or better yet, what's the new new fighter planes? You're an F-35. There is no reverse. There is no stop button, amen? Man, there's nowhere to go but forward. That's us. We're persistent. We have a don't give up spirit. Amen? Didn't King David have that spirit? Never gave up. Kept seeking, even when he messed up, and he did some big mess ups. 
He came back to the Lord, came back to the Lord, came back to the Lord. He would not give up, would not give in. Someone say amen. He had some chutzpah. Over here in, y'all like that word, huh? Over here in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says continue, be persistent. That's what that word continue means in the Greek. Same word. Be persistent. Everybody say be persistent. Be persistent in prayer. And watch, keep alert as you pray, giving thanks to God. Again, the Holy Spirit through the Word, I'm going to show you a parable where Jesus goes into great detail about being persistent in prayer. And you and I have got to learn to pray and not give up. You say, well, I prayed once, Pastor, nothing. Pray again? Well, I prayed twice. I mean, you might need to pray for 10 years before you see an answer. I'm not talking about like the heathen, vain, repetitious prayer. I'm talking about heartfelt prayers where you're bringing up maybe a loved one, maybe a lost son or a lost daughter is turned away from God, and you're needing to continue in prayer, to be persistent in prayer. You may be the only, your prayers, listen to me, your prayers may be the only thing that stand between them and the gates of hell. Maybe the only thing. Over and over, he promises that he is God who answers prayer, who loves to give gifts to his children, and who has perfect timing to answer our prayers. Everybody say perfect timing. How many of you have been serving the Lord long enough that his timing is different than our timing? Amen. We live in a fast food microwave society, right? Air fryer society now, right? I mean, you stick it in there and you want it done three minutes. Boom. Lord, I prayed about this once. I spent 10 seconds on it. Why hadn't you answered yet? Listen, Heavenly Father has perfect timing. Everybody say perfect timing. How many of you know he's never late? But he's always just on time. Sometimes just, just, just on. Have you ever known anybody like that? Just on, don't answer. Just on time, amen? Just on time. Listen, God's time table is different than ours, amen? So if you pray and you don't receive an answer just then, keep praying. It doesn't mean give up. It does not mean stop praying. Someone say amen. Have you ever prayed about something and gave up too soon? Come on, guys, right? Persistence in prayer. How many of you know if you have faith in God, you're going to learn to pray persistently? Well, I prayed once and nothing happened. Darn, shucks. So I'm just going to give up. What kind of faith is that? That's ridiculous. That's not faith at all, is it? To persist in prayer means to approach God's throne with boldness, with confidence. Everybody say confidence. With confidence and faith that he hears us and will answer us. He just doesn't answer us when we think he needs to answer us. Someone say amen. You don't believe me, let me ask you this. How many thousands of years have God's people been praying for his kingdom to come to this earth for his will to be done? Hasn't happened yet. It will And how many of you know Heavenly Father in Revelation, and I taught on this Friday night, has been storing up all those prayers. And it's preparing one day to release them all at once. Y'all look at me like I'm crazy. You can go back Friday night and watch it. It's good. It's like incense before them stored up. Has the angel just cast it down to earth. Because it's fixing to happen. He says, these are the prayers of the saints. Boom, lightnings and thunders. Earthquakes. It's going to happen. Your prayers, even the ones not answered right away, are stored up in heaven to be released in due time. I think that's amazing. To persist in prayer means to approach God's throne with boldness, confidence, and faith that he hears us and will answer us. It means to keep praying even when I don't feel like it. You ever wake up and don't feel like doing something? (laughs) I was going to pick on the younger generation, but I won't. 
They're looking for a million workers, Pastor Brian. They're missing a million workers in America, young people. They don't know what's happened to them. They just woke up and don't want to go to work. So they just thought, we're not going to work. They're living with mom and dad. Listen, to pray means to keep praying even when you don't feel like it, even when your eyes tell you things look like they're getting worse. But I'm going to pray believing and pray trusting in God and trusting his word. Someone say amen. Now that's faith. Everybody say that's faith. So even if we don't feel like it, when we've been praying for the same thing for years with no answer, in my first congregation, and I may have shared this in the evangelism class, we had a woman who taught children's church every service for 10 years. Husband once saved. She is very evangelistic. She'd go out with us to Mardi Gras outreaches, my wife and I with our team. She was just love the Lord. And she'd always be, I'm praying for my husband, I'm praying for my husband, I'm praying for my husband. Ten years that I knew her, praying for her husband. All of a sudden, one day, God did a miracle. And her husband gave his life to Jesus. He was working on a Corvette. He had a Corvette that he loved, that he was working on. And it caught fire one day in his garage. And none of the wires burned. And he knew it was God. He just knew. He had that sense. He got on his knees, gave his life to Jesus right there in the garage. He became a transformed man. I knew him before and after. I'd been to their house in those 10 years many times. Like talking to a brick wall. But what I admired the most was her prayers for all those years without seeing an answer. She had chutzpah. Never gave up. But in the end, she has a magnificent testimony. Amen. Ten years. That's a lot of headaches. Someone say amen. It's difficult to persevere in prayer when we don't see any change happening in our lives. This requires faith. Well, I'm praying, Pastor, about this, this, and this, but nothing's happening. What do I do? Keep praying. Everybody say keep praying. Pray and faint not. Do not give up. Have some chutzpah, amen? Have some faith. Lord, I may not see with my eyes, but I trust in your perfect timing this is going to happen in Jesus' name. Especially if you're praying God's will. You're praying for a loved one who's lost. We know it's God's will that all men should be what? Saved. So that's an easy one, right? You know you're praying according to his will because it's his desire to see this person saved. So you're praying and you're seeking and you're asking and you're knocking. You might be wondering why God doesn't give us what we ask for immediately. Why does he desire persistence and consistency in prayer? Why do you think that is? Think about it for a minute. Could it be because he keeps us, this this consistency, this persistency, keeps us from treating God like a magical genie who grants all of our wishes? You know, some people teach that about God. Makes me pretty sick to my stomach. But they'll find out one day. He's not a magical genie, amen. He's not a slot machine you put in a coin and and up comes three cherries. He's Heavenly Father who loves you. And he cares more about the person or people that you're praying about than you do. That's what's mind-blowing. And those of you praying for children, God loves them and desires their fellowship even more than we desire them to be fellowshipping with you. So you're not like trying to twist his arm to talk him into doing something, but he does not override human free will. You just need to know that, right? So when you're praying, it may take time for divine circumstances and divine appointments and for seeds to be planted, and seeds to be watered, and watered, and watered again, then God adds the increase, and boom. Just like that man after 10 years gave his life to Jesus. Transformed forever. Forever. 
It's amazing. It causes us to depend on God, trusting him to give us what we need at just the right time. How many of you remember the Hebrews in the wilderness with the manna? So they had no bread. God caused like coriander seed to fall on the earth. They had to go and pick it up every day, turn it into bread. But the funny thing about it was if they gathered too much, more than their family needed for that day, it grew worms and rotted overnight and stank. Why? Because God wanted to give them just what they needed for that moment. We don't often like living like that, do we? God, I want abundance. Well, some of us, abundance would destroy us. He's like, you know, lead you and guide you and give you just what you need. So you'll learn to trust me. Everybody say it, trust him. It brings glory to God when he powerfully answers our prayers in unexpected ways. How many of you have ever had prayers answered in unexpected ways? Amen. It is mind-blowing and mind-boggling the ways that God can answer prayer. Over and above what you and I could even imagine or think, if we'll pray and keep on praying, ask, keep on asking, seek, and keep on seeking, it causes us to regularly draw near to God because you're being persistent in prayer. Persistent in prayer. Let's look at what our Lord Jesus had to say about this. In Luke chapter 11, now, as we go into reading this, you need to understand in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, and you can read that in your own time, one of the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray like John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And right here, Jesus, from that, goes into this parable about persistence in prayer. It's amazing. The first thing the Lord begins to talk about to teach them to pray is to be persistent in their praying. And this is what Jesus said to them. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give it to you. But they keep banging on the door anyway. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his what? Everybody say persistence. Persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Amen? And I was kind of thinking about this. I'm going to use Pastor Jeremy as my illustration for this one. So Pastor Jeremy lives kind of around the corner from me, right? And sometimes I'll bring him food. Sometimes he brings me food. So I was thinking, as I read through this, I'd say, huh, whose house would I go to? And I thought, I'd go to Pastor Jeremy's house. If I needed some food at midnight in the middle of the night, I'd go bang on Pastor Jeremy's door, pray he didn't shoot me through the door, and say, brother, you got any roasted peppers or any chili or something in there? I've got folks over, and I don't have enough to feed them. And Pastor Jeremy, he'd be groggy, a little upset because I woke him and the family up, but he'd say, Pastor, take whatever you want, amen? Just take it and go, because I'd be persistent, amen? Listen, in your prayer life, you and I have got to learn to be persistent. You're not trying to twist God's arm to do something he doesn't want to do. Remember, prayer is not for God, it's for who? It's for you to grow and to build faith and character and all the, the, the character that Holy Spirit wants us to learn to reflect to the world around us. Amen? So I say to you, verse 9, ask and it will be given to you. Everybody say ask. Seek and you will find. Knock, it will be open to you. For everyone, everybody say everyone. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. In Luke 11, 1, we said one of his disciples asked the Lord to teach him to pray. He taught him by this parable about persistence. A spirit of asking, knocking, and seeking in prayer. We will see God's hand at work in our lives when things are tough. If you knock and keep on knocking, if you ask and keep on asking, 
if you seek and keep on seeking. Don't give up in prayer, amen? Too many of God's people have given up. And then every now and then, there's somebody who's there praying, 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 not giving up. How many of you have heard about the revival broke out in Asbury, Kentucky, right? I talked about it <clears throat> for the last couple of weeks. How many of you know right now, revival's broken down 21 universities as I speak to you? 21 universities and still going strong. Talk about young people, college people, 24-7 seeking God in prayer and worship. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I heard and read some of their testimonies. Some of them have skipped meals and skipped eating just to be in the presence of God. 21 universities. Now, how many of you know that since the last Great Awakenings we had, uh, there's a new movie out, by the way, called Jesus Revolution. Haven't seen it, but I heard it's awesome. Can't give my two thumbs up till I've seen it. But a reliable source, it says it's very, very awesome. But it's about the Jesus movement in the 1970s, the last time the Holy Spirit really, really moved in a miraculous way. And all these hippies got saved. How many of you are old enough to remember hippies? Hippies were millennials with flowers. <laughs> flowers and bell bottoms. Am I right? That's when bell bottoms were in. And the Volkswagen bug with the flowers. Y'all remember, right, some of you? And all these hippies got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And they all ended up in these kind of dead denominational churches. And they didn't know what to do with them. Man, they came in with the long hair and with the guitar and, you know, praying in the Spirit. And God used it to shake up a generation. Then we had the charismatic renewal of the 1980s. It started, of all places, in the Catholic Church. And then swept the nation. Now listen, I say all that to say this. There are men and women who have been praying for an awakening across this nation for decades. Myself, one of them. I pray with a group of pastors. We've been praying for this moment for years. We've been praying together now, I think, six years. Six years as an apostolic council of men of God and faith. Praying for an awakening for this nation and eventually for this city. Amen? For this city. Some of you know this city has churches everywhere. Doesn't need more religion. It needs people in the churches to actually come to know Jesus. Someone say amen. That's another message. It's through prayer that we become steadfast and immovable. Almost done in our faith, and that we come to know God more intimately and grow in our love for Him. It's through prayer, guys. Why don't we pray? Don't answer that. Learn to pray. Look at your neighbor say, I'm going to learn to pray. Wherever you're at in your prayer life, Holy Spirit wants to bring it to the next level. Someone say amen. Amen. <clears throat> So I'm going to quit there. I'm going to pick up this next week, Persistence of Jacob in Prayer. You want to talk about one persistent dude, that was Jacob. It started off where Jacob worked for seven years for his wife before he could marry her. He had to work seven years before he could get married. How many of you men worked seven years before you could marry your wife? I don't know if it's because he expected Rachel to be so expensive. No, I'm kidding. Rachel, who he was betrothed to, was supposed to be his wife, worked seven years. The wedding day happens. I don't know if he had too much wine or what, but he didn't realize that father-in-law snuck the wrong sister in and didn't give him Rachel, gave him Leah instead. The next morning he wakes up and realized he'd consummated the marriage with the sister. True story. And dad, the father-in-law says, well, Jacob, you want Rachel? I'll give her to you for another seven years. And he worked another seven years. And this is the same Jacob that eventually wrestled with God. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Are you encouraged to pray and not give up? Are you encouraged to be persistent in prayer? 
are you encouraged to realize that your praying is not to change God, but it's to allow Holy Spirit to change you, to change your life, to change your heart, to change your character. Amen? With every head bowed, every eye closed, Father, we love you, we bless you. Saints, praying around the room, we thank you for the work of Holy Spirit in our hearts and minds. Let's just settle our thoughts for just a moment. If your stomach growls, tell it soon, and you will not die. With every head bowed, every eye closed, Father, we just still our spirit before you for just a moment, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. If you're here today, no one's looking around. This is a quiet moment between you and Heavenly Father. Maybe you're here and you've never committed your life to Jesus Christ. You're not sure if you died, you'd go to heaven. You can't say you've met the Lord. But you realize today that you'd like Jesus to be the Lord of your life. You want him to take control, to be in the driver's seat of your life. Maybe you've been to a place where you commit your life to the Lord maybe a very long time ago, but you're far from him. And he's calling you home today. He says, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. Come back to me. With every head bowed, every eye closed, that's you here today. Lift your hand to Jesus. You know who you are. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Saints, continue to pray. Now, for this next one, I'm not going to call you forward. But if you're here today and you, you understand, you know, you really haven't been persistent in prayer. Matter of fact, maybe your prayer life's been like either non-existent or, or very low-key and low-level. And the Holy Spirit is put like a new excitement in your heart to want to pray and want to see him move in your life and move in your family and move in your children and move in your loved ones and move in your city and move in your nation. No one looking around. I'm not going to call you forward, but if that's you, lift your hand to Jesus. I want to pray for you all over the room. God bless you. Leave it up. Lift it up high. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hands going up all over. You say, that's me. Pray for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, God bless these for their honesty, Lord. Father, I pray for the power and anointing and presence of your Holy Spirit to birth a spirit of prayer in their hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, may they ask and keep asking, seek and continue to seek, knock and continue to knock, Father. May there be a fresh hunger and a thirst in their hearts and their spirit, Lord, a longing, Lord, to touch you and to be touched by you, Father. That they're not just hearing about how Jesus is moving in the lives of other people, but they'll have a testimony of how you're moving in their life, changing their life. You're no respecter of persons, Lord. What you do in one man's life or one woman's life, you'll do in another. Bless these, Lord, with a spirit of persistency, a spirit of prayer. May they pray always and faint not. May they wake up with a prayer on their lips as they go throughout the day, let there be a prayer on their lips. And as they settle down at night, let there be a prayer on their lips. May they pray for their family, for their spouse, for their children, for their loved ones, their workplace, their play place, their city place, Lord, and the nation, Father. In the matchless name of Jesus, make it so, Lord. Move on their hearts, Lord. Those with hands lifted up, leave them up to the Lord and just tell Jesus in your own words, just in a whisper, say, Lord, I desire to seek you. Give me a hunger for prayer, a hunger to know you, Lord, a hunger to pray as never before, Lord, a hunger, Lord, to be persistent and not give up in prayer in the name of Jesus. 